Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, August 30th, 2021. I'm your host, Blessing Adioye Jr. Joining me is White Drake, a.k.a. Tim Ma Fucking Gettys. How do you feel about that, Bless? I'm going to tell you right you now. Know, like it. It'll grow on you. Right now. It'll yeah. grow on you. Yeah, we'll see. Gary would have we'll hit gold see. when he came up with that one. He did hit gold. He did hit gold. Uh, well, let me tell you, it does excite me. I do like it. <laughs> but it also, it gives me this like little little tinge of fear. You know what I mean? I don't, oh, I'm what's not there really to fear? Sure. I don't you know. You think Pusha T is going to come baby. after you? You think yeah, White Pusha T is going to come find you? Reveal your Holy shit. In the world? I don't want to meet White Pusha T. That sounds very, very <laughs> Who do you think White Pusha T is? Is it Nick I, Scarpino? No, no, it's not. No, I don't know. I don't know. But don't ever put that out into the world. I hate that. <laughs> God. Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing real well, Bless. It's been, it's been a, a much-needed weekend. Got oh, to... Yeah play some video games you know what i mean i've been dabbling oh. with uh with uh, uh psychonauts uh, i haven't gotten oh. too far yet but excited to talk more about that play tonight talk on gamescast tomorrow um also played a little game while i was downloading psychonauts something caught my eye uh on the game pass screen that was called um um hold on hold on i wrote it down quake no 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 it was next Sonic to quake Generations. Though. it was next to quake uh art the... of rally okay have you I've seen never heard this? Of this no We'll talk about it on Gamescast tomorrow, but it's a old school rally like uh, game where you rally car game, but like with a very indie influenced art style. It's pretty damn cool, and it was more fun than it should be. I'll tell you that. But I'll tell you okay. too. This Game Pass thing, it's going places. Yeah, this Game Pass, this Game Pass thing is really going places. No, that's that's been my thing. Whenever I turn on my Xbox, every now and then I just go back to Perfect Dark. Just because it's, it's there, right? Just because it's it, there, and you're like, "Well, we got options." <laughs> yeah, it's like, why not? Why, why shouldn't I boot this thing up? Where are you at with Psychonauts too? Because I still haven't booted that thing up. Real early, real, real, real early. I just got it downloaded, got it set because tonight's mm. going to be my play time with it. Like, for real, for real. Are you enjoying it so far? And you're what thirty minutes with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I am enjoying it. It's still, uh, it's one of those things like I've said before. Like the Psychonauts never grabbed me the first one. I, I, I kind of like didn't really love it. And so far, this one isn't uh, proving my opinions wrong to myself. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Uh, Andy was playing through. I saw he was tweeting about it, saying that like he gets all the game of the year conversation. I'm like, okay, really? yeah. And like going into it, I think me and Andy were in more similar places about it. So um, hopefully, I just gotta keep pushing through. Yeah, I can't wait to start it. Like, I, I meant to start it this last weekend, but Tim, I got pulled into a game called Genshin Impact. <laughs> and I've played maybe about... God bless you. I've played maybe about 10 hours of Genshin Impact in the last Whoa! three days. Holy yeah. shit, okay. Getting I ready for that in, Aloy? Getting ready for Aloy, yeah. You got to be Adventure Rank 20 to actually play as Aloy when, when Aloy comes out. And I'm at, I'm at Adventure Rank 16, and that is with my hours in the last weekend combined with my hours playing when the game first came out because i first played i played like maybe seven hours when the when the game first dropped on playstation last year dropped off and then came back on this last weekend and put in like an additional 10 hours so i'm like 15 to 17 hours into this game and i still haven't reached rank 20 and i am still somehow in the prologue for this game that but i'm having a blast hilarious. yeah it's it's wild because the this game is surprisingly it when when Immortals Phoenix Rising came out, I hated on Immortals Phoenix Rising because I felt like that game learned the wrong lessons from Breath of the Wild. This game surprisingly, I feel like hits the nail on the head in so many ways compared so to Breath weird. of the Wild, but takes that stuff and just turns it into a casino in uh -huh. a way that is is unsavory, but in a way that I can kind of respect because like the game design is there. Don't like, the use game the word respect. Enough. Don't use the word respect with that. You can but say enjoy, right. bless. You can say enjoy, but don't say respect. <laughs> I respect I, I respect it because I, 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 I see the machinations. I see the algorithm at work. I uh -huh. see what they're doing and I see how they're trying to manipulate me. Like uh -huh. I they have uh, card packs. They're not they're not card packs, but I'm just gonna call them card packs because people get what that is. Mm -hmm. They have basically uh, things you can roll to get more characters. And I rolled so many packs, Tim. I tried to unlock one character. Her name is, is I believe her name is Zenyon. She is like this guitar playing anime Let, girl. Let's get Zenyon. I want I want Zenyon, and they won't let me buy Zenyon. To get Zenyon, I have to roll for Zenyon. And I've been messing up these rolls, Tim. I spent so many, I, be, I believe they're called Acquaint Fates or an intertwined fates. I think they're both. I've been spending so many fates, Tim, trying to roll these packs so I can unlock Zenyon. You're and in, instead, man. I unlock Sayu. I've unlocked Sayu twice now. And <sighs> I like Sayu. Sayu. Sayu's great. Sayu has healing abilities. But Sayu isn't Zenyon, Tim. If you had a Zenyon for every time you got a Zayu. 
Oh you my two god. Zanyons. I'd have two Zanyons, Tim. But yeah, I definitely want to I definitely want to hop into to Psychonauts too. I've seen enough people compare it to Rare on N64. And I'm like, that's all I need to hear. That's, that's all I need say to no hear. More. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. Say no more. I can't wait to talk about that on Games. Are you going to get but... into the, the rigmarole right now? Oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to do a quick phone call while you do that with Andy Cortez. Oh, Tim, take that call while you do that. Let me tell you about how today's stories include Norman Reedus hinting at Death Stranding 2, Suda51 wants to make a Deadpool game, and more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. You should every week at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen Listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily. To be a part of the show, to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show. Housekeeping for you, a new kind of funny podcast is up right now titled Greg's Babys- Babysitter Power Rankings. Greg's Babysitter Power Rankings. I saw that I'm on the thumbnail for that one along with other kind of funny folks. Makes me worried seeing the thumbnail and seeing the title, but if you haven't checked it out yet, go check it out. I'm sure it's a great episode. Is. This Did Thursday. I high? Oh, well, is that Kevin? Did I rank high? I mean, I can tell you, Tim. Did Kevin rank high on the babysitter ranking? I was asking Tim. Oh yes, yes you did. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'll take care of your baby. That's upsetting to me. That's upset. <laughs> did Kevin rank higher than I did? Uh, yeah, he did. You ranked oh, pretty come on. low. Bless, okay. bless. Don't. I mean, that's fair. This, yeah. Listen. I mean, no, bless, bless. There was good explanations for all of us. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not upset that I ranked low. I'm more upset that Kevin ranked high. <laughs> hey, you give me a baby. I'll raise it right. I don't know about that, bro. I don't know. That <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to do a sequel. Look at what behave my dog is. I mean, a dog's not a child, but I digress. This Thursday, you're getting a new episode of The what Blessing Show. What experience do you have? Well, that's why that's why I'm not upset that I ranked low. It's just the fact that you ranked high because I want to know. I, I feel like I would be more careful with a baby. No, you never like, see me with a kid. Kids love me. I take care of kids so well. I mean, I take actually, actually, no, I do have experience with like taking your children. I worked in an elementary school for three months. All right, Kevin, <laughs> for three solid three months, months, I worked. And then you got fired worked, for negligism. In an elementary <laughs> school. Negligism. Negligism. <laughs> Neg- <laughs> ne- I can't. It's not working. <laughs> no, you're there. You're there. You're right there. This Thursday, you're getting a new episode of The Blessing Show. Uh, that's going live at 7 a.m. Pacific time with a YouTube premiere on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. I'm not going to tell you guys what that episode is about. All I'm going to say is that it's a pretty big episode. It's a pretty big episode. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Blackjack. Today brought to you by Purple Mattress, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have five stories today. What is the explanation for Kevin ranking high on the babysitting list? I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, you got to listen to the episode. There's a lot of good points made. A lot of good points made. Like Nick talked story, as well. Story number one. Norman Reedus says <laughs> another Death Stranding game is, quote, in negotiations. I'm pulling from Stephanie Miner at The Gamer. Norman Reedus, known for his role as Daryl Dixon in The Walking Dead and Sam Porter Bridges from Death Stranding, recently shared some insight on another Death Stranding game with a reporter from Adoro Cinema. IGN Brazil, a partner site to Adoro Cinema, quotes Reedus as saying, quote, I think we're doing a second Death Stranding. The game is in negotiations right now. So, dot, 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 yay, end quote. This could pot- potentially be huge news for Death Stranding fans, though nothing has been confirmed yet in an official capacity. It also isn't totally clear if readers could possibly be referring to the director's cut version of Death Stranding, which is set to release in, sept- in September of this year. Uh, as a reminder, Jeff Grubb at GamesBeat earlier this year on July 1st reported that Hideo Kojima and Microsoft have signed a letter of intent that states that two par- the two parties tend intend to work out the details on a publishing agreement for a new Xbox game, according to sources familiar with the matter. Uh, this is a key step in negotiations between the Metal Gear Solid creator and the Xbox company. This signifies that both parties have agreed to a generalized deal while lawyers continue hashing out the finer points. Wanted that. Wanted to add that in for context. Tim, mom, mm-hmm. fucking Gettys. D- do you think this is happening? Do you think we're getting Death Stranding to you? Do you think Norman Reedus is full of it? 
This is complicated in a lot of ways. So normally when we get these kind of random uh, news tidbits from celebrities, they they tend to not lead to, to truth, right? It's just offhanded comments people make in c- completely unrelated projects. This happens a lot in movies, right? Where mm-hmm. um, – IGN is interviewing, uh, or like let's let's say the Hollywood Reporter. Hollywood Reporter is interviewing um, Michael Douglas about a movie he's like to promote a movie that he's in. They're going to ask him some questions about Ant Man: Quantumania because he's in it, and they know that that's going to get headlines and that's going to get some clicks, right? So oftentimes people will be asked things. In video games, I think that happens a little bit less just because of the way that video games work, and there's not too many celebrities in video games, and there's not too many actors. Uh, in video games, like there's been more and more over time, but uh, you know, th- we're, it's not every video game we're getting in Norman Reedus. So I think yeah. that we're in this unique position where they could be asked about projects and they might talk a little bit more openly as if it was a movie instead of a video game, right? Or a TV show. Like that's that's just kind of like how that world works. So Norman Reedus would probably talk about it like the way he would talk about other movies or TV shows, which is a little more open and a little more like, oh yeah, I heard this thing's happening. In the movie and TV world, I heard this thing's happening. There's so many stages of of green light and and scripting and approval and pickup and and all of that stuff before it ends up on TV. Whereas video games is a lot more secretive. There's a lot more behind the scenes. And sure, him and Kojima could have had a conversation about Death Stranding 2 at some point. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it's happening. Because to an extent, that's not a lie. It is happening where it's being worked on, being thought of. Will it actually end up happening? That's a completely unrelated thing but i do think that there's more truth to this nugget than normally because it's norman reedus it's kojima and all of that stuff as well as the fact that death stranding sold surprisingly well compared to what a lot of people expected it to um and a lot of people thought it did looking back on it like last update we have um came out in july but the update was from sales numbers from march of 2020 and that was at uh over five million so hmm. that's that's a, a successful game, uh, especially limited to PS4, and then eventually it was PC as well. And then now we have the director's cut coming out that's going to boost those numbers. Um, additionally, those are numbers that are sequel worthy, right? Like that that's the type of stuff where it's like, all right, cool, it's worth investing in this franchise to to get some more out of this from a financial point of view. Adding that to all the rumors of the Kojima Xbox stuff, could the team be working on multiple games? There's a lot there to really boil it down do i think we're gonna death stranding too i don't something in my gut says we won't but maybe that's just because that's not what i want from yeah i think is the combination of of death stranding being such a divisive series in terms of how it was received at launch plus it being hideo kojima hideo kojima strikes me as the dude that probably doesn't want to do franchise work as much nowadays because he did that with Metal Gear Solid. He made so many Metal Gear Solid games. And I feel like at this point with where Metal Gear Solid went from Metal Gear Solid 1 to him having struggles, even getting Metal Gear Solid 5 out the door and that game coming out unfinished in the story aspects of it and him having his, his experience with Konami, it's hard for me to th- to think that Kojima would want to go down the route of creating a franchise that lasts over multiple iterations, unless he has full creative control with it, which I'm sure with Death Stranding, to some extent, he does, right? Even though Death Stranding is a PlayStation first-party game, I'm sure in those negotiations with PlayStation, Kojima goes, hey, I want you guys to meddle uh, uh, not at all in this game, right? Like, I want to have my own creative freedom with the, with this thing, which is how we get a game like Death Stranding, which is a game about delivering packages and walking as the main mechanic, right? Like, that is a strange game that Kojima put out, and he's able to put it out because, you know, he doesn't have meddling from bigger publishers asking him to make a game any sort of way. Um, with that, a Death Stranding 2 on with you would be surprising. Norman Reedus talking about it, I think, is an interesting thing. And I think, you know, the article uh, does a good job of pointing out that, hey, maybe it's a director's cut thing. Maybe he has wires crossed. Maybe he considers that to be sequel-ish because maybe there's content in the director's cut that is follow-ups on the story of Death Stranding at the end of that Easily trailer. Easily could be that, yeah. Yeah, at the end of that trailer at Gamescom, right, you had that weird scene toward, toward the end where you had the big whale creature come through and almost eat Norman Reedus alive, like, does that take place later on? Do, like, does that is that a side story? Is that something that Norman Reedus recorded and went, oh, this must be part of a 1.5 game or a, or a Death Stranding 2? Maybe. Like, as somebody who's in a voice, voice actor role, like, I assume that maybe for him, like, when he gets called up to do additional voice, voice work for the game, he goes, 
all right, cool. Yeah, I'm just making more content. And it's different from TV, where in TV or in movies, if you're recording additional content, that is a sequel. That is more content, right? But in a video game, video game is being so different from movies and TV. I can see how you get those wires crossed. Yep, totally. Would you want a Death Stranding 2? Personally, I would not because I didn't enjoy Death Stranding 1. And mm -hmm. I really enjoy Kojima games otherwise. So it's like, I, I would, in the order of operations here, I would rather him be working on a Metal Gear game be number one, and I understand how what goes into that and why that might not happen. Number two would be just a brand new IP uh, that is more in line with uh, the action side of things as opposed to uh, what Death Stranding was. And then number three would be another IP, like something like Silent Hill um, or, or something, and just Kojima's take on something that's already established. Because uh, just personally, like the, his take with Death Stranding was the stuff I like least of about Kojima, in mm -hmm. not just distilled, but like in one grandiose package that is Death Stranding, and it just didn't vibe with me. So yeah, I would not be looking forward to a Death Stranding too. Yeah, Death Stranding. Funny enough, right before the show, we were talking about Kanye in his discography, and Death Stranding is the game that I would compare it to his Jesus, right? Like, yeah, it is him it's being very like, good point, I'm, man. I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna make it experimental. I don't give a fuck like who likes it. I don't give a fuck about uh like game design standards. I'm here to break the standard. I'm gonna make this this thing that is a commentary on the on games design and a commentary on the world. And for a lot of people that worked, and for quite a uh, for a lot of people as well that didn't work. I think for me. What I would want from Kojima, I would want something new. I like the idea that he, uh, even like even though I I game mainly on PlayStation, I like the idea that he's talking to Xbox, you know, in order to figure out what putting a game on there on there is like. I like the idea of Kojima having options because I think the more freedom you give him to do whatever the fuck he wants, the more space he has to maybe make something that is amazing. And so for many people. Death Stranding was that amazing thing. Like Death Stranding did get incredible incredible reviews from quite a few outlets. I went into Death Stranding and I really enjoyed what I played of it. For I I and I think he's able to do that because he had the freedom of, hey, PlayStation, we're coming to you, we're allowing you allowing you to do your thing. And Xbox does the same thing and gives him Game Pass as an outlet or gives him XCloud as an outlet and gives him um whatever resources he he needs in order to make the game that he wants to make and not have to worry about sales because Game Pass is the way that people are going to get that game. I wonder what that allows him to create. I wonder I wonder what direction he takes that. And I wonder I just wonder what he ha still has in the tank in terms of new IP and and new ideas cuz I like when Kojima gets weird. I like when he when he gets in his bag and is like, "Cool, I am going to make an adventure game or I am going to make a game starring Norman Reedus where you walk around uh post-apocalyptic USA, right? Like I want to, I want to see more of his new ideas or I want to see blue point, make a Metal Gear solid game and have him work alongside it. Like that is the dream for me. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's interesting. You bring up the Kanye thing. It's like, I, I want to, I, I can agree with you that death Stranding feels more Jesus is Jesus ish. But like, mm -hmm. I want to see what's his 808s and heartbreak. Like, what is the thing that is still mm -hmm. different from what we expected from Kanye? But it's like, you know, this new pro it's 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 this new thing that is solid from from top to bottom, and it it works, and it's like kind of looked back at as a new classic that is next to, but uh, still separate from the original trilogy uh, of albums, right? And with uh Kojima, it's like, what could that be? And I know to a lot of people, it might be Death Stranding, but. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for me. So it's like, I, I wonder what could be. And I love this idea of, especially if it's with Game Pass, like some type, no one has nailed the modern episodic video game with Game Pass as a medium, right? And I think that that is such an untapped potential. And I think Kojima could be the, the, oh, the, the person the with the it. team to figure that out because yeah. um, like the value of game pass is that it's, it's always there. You're always going to have, you don't need to worry about buying more things and all that. So if they can figure out a cadence of releasing episodic titles that keep people coming back uh, without getting people lost along the way, that could be so cool. and so valuable to them. Like uh, imagine like a live service game, but it's a single player narrative thing. Right. Oh yeah. And like I mean, Kojima has mentioned that he's wanted to make an episodic game before. I know Kojima said a lot of things. He's, I mean, just last week he just was talking about how he wants to make an adventure game. But I, I, I mean, I think that would be the avenue to do it, right? If he did want to make episodic, Game Pass is this is the thing. I was theorizing for a long time that like 
Xbox would buy Don't Nod because that would be such a good fit because you had Tell Me Why come out as an episodic thing, right? You had Don't Nod being the folks who created Life is Strange. And like with that partnership, I thought that was a done deal. I thought that was I I, I thought that was an easy get for Xbox. So I've, I'm surprised they haven't even done that yet. But for Game Pass, I think that makes so much sense, especially when you talk about the marketing strategy for it, right? For something like Game Pass, I think it is smart to have uh, releases that evolve over time and have people coming back to it repeatedly. And so if Kojima was putting out, let's say, a 12-episode episodic thing where one episode comes out a month, that is going to keep people subscribed to Game Pass for that whole year to experience that full thing, right? Like for Xbox, you got to find smart ways in order to keep people hooked on the service. And I think that would be the that would be a slam dunk in terms of doing it. Totally. Tim, mm -hmm. let's continue talking about big game directors. The story number two, Suda51 wants to make a Deadpool game. I'm pulling from Chris Skolian at Video Games Chronicle. No More Heroes creator Suda51 has stated that he would love to make a Deadpool game with Marvel. During a two-hour launch live stream with IGN in Japan, Suda was asked what was next for, for the developer, uh, or what was next for developer Grasshopper Manufacture now that No More Heroes series is over. Quote, the broad answer is we already have a lot of products that are in development, Suda, Suda replied via a translator. Quote, and over the next 10 years, we have three original IPs that we were working on and we have already planned out. Quote, so you can definitely look forward to a lot of new, interesting original IPs from Grasshopper. We also, of course, have other plans and are working hard on them to bring them to fruition. But in terms of the kind of things I'd love to do, I'd love to work with Marvel on a Shatterstar or Deadpool game. Something sort of Grasshopper-y like that. Maybe a Quicksilver title or uh, or maybe a Quicksilver title of some sorts. So... So Marvel, you know, end quote. The third and seemingly final game in the main No More Heroes series was released last week, after which Suda took to Twitter to declare that the series was over. Tim, did you have you played No More Heroes 3 at all? No, I have not played 3 yet. Well, where are you at? I, 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 I missed, I don't know if we talked about this on the show last week, the fact that No More Heroes 3 seems to be the final in the franchise. Like, where are you at with that? But then also, where are you at with where Suda51 wants to go? Like a big Deadpool game. I mean, it's, it's all really interesting. Suda51, extremely talented, and uh, No More Heroes 1 specifically was a very important game for me, and I, I loved it so much. It was so important to the Wii, uh, especially at that moment in time, and it just felt so fresh and so different uh, compared to anything else that we, we had. As times went on, I feel like that freshness isn't so fresh anymore because that type of um, vibe has been normalized a bit more. Like, the world has been introduced to things like Adventure Time, uh, to the point that Adventure Time is kind of just modern pop culture, right? It's not this mm. unique thing. Every piece of animation since then uh, in that vein has very much followed that mold, right? And I think that with Suda51, that kind of weirdness that is like, like, you know, I'm going to say fuck and it's funny, like definitely fits Deadpool, right? Oh, but it's yeah. like Deadpool, I think even has kind of evolved past that of needing to kind of be more than just that. And and so I wonder what this could look like. You've been playing three. Like I, I was seeing your your tweets about it. Seems like you're mm -hmm. not in love with it. No. Yeah. I'm split. I'm split in two directions because I I love Suda Fifty One and the Suda Fifty One attitude is there. And like, No More Heroes Three has its moments. It has the stuff I love about Travis Touchdown and what I love about this series. And it has the style and it has the cutscenes and all that stuff. But for me, the gameplay was what held a lot of that game back. It feels like a game that was made like the same year as No More Heroes 2, right? Like it's held back so much, but I think the technology of the Switch, but then also them just not being able to bring the franchise forward in any way, if you know what I mean. And yeah. I, I I mean, for what you're talking about with Deadpool, right? Like I think tonally, No More Heroes is still kind of in 2010 in a way that Travis is still calling people yeah. fuckhead. Tra like it, like it, the cool, some of the quote unquote cool aspects of No More Heroes is really like, saying the bad words or getting really bloody and all that stuff in ways that in ways that like feel feel root, still rooted back in the last decade but also in some parts ways that feel fresh and cool like i think i think no more heroes 3 can be hit and miss in a lot of those moments but that said after playing no more heroes 3 i could see suda 51 making a really interesting deadpool game because the thing that I, one of the things i do like um about no more heroes 3 is that in terms of gameplay, that game isn't afraid to to 
keep you on your toes and switch things up in moments that you wouldn't expect it to. Like, the game isn't afraid to get to a boss fight, and all of a sudden you're fighting a different boss than you thought you were fighting, right? The game isn't afraid to get to a boss fight and totally change up gameplay in a way where it's like, okay, cool, you were doing uh, third-person action, now you're doing a totally com- a completely different genre, right? The, the game isn't afraid to do things like that. And in a Deadpool Everyone's game... Everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. But in, in No More Heroes, I think it works because No More Heroes doesn't take itself seriously. It has seriously. that frenetic, crazy action of like, you don't know what's happening because we're crazy. E- exactly. And I think that would work so well for Deadpool. If you're playing Deadpool uh, as a third-person action game one second and then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden you get to the next level and for some reason you're playing a Mario Party clone. Like, I could see a Deadpool game playing around with that kind of stuff really interesting, in, really interestingly in a way that Point, I yeah. think Suda51 could po- probably pull off. Yeah, that could be really cool, and it, it would have to be a smaller game, I think. But mm-hmm. I think that 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 definitely could work. It just it's always interesting when we see these kind of uh, games come out from these renowned creators, and it's a weird balance of we want something new and fresh, but we also just want them to give us what they gave us before. Yes, and that finding that balance between the two is is very difficult because it being caught, like stuck in the 2010s, it's like. Is that necessarily a criticism or is that a good thing? You know, yeah, and like, like that, that's like the complexity of this. That's the tough thing is that for me, it's both. For me, it's the thing where it, No More Heroes 3 has so many of the things that I love about No More Heroes 1 and 2, but it also has some of the things that I don't love about No More Heroes 1 and 2, especially playing those games in 2021. Like I went back and I played uh, some of No More Heroes 1 again when they remastered it for Switch and immediately getting into the open world stuff, I was like, Oh yeah, this stuff was really laborious. Oh yeah, I don't love driving around uh, Santa Destroy. Oh yeah, like the open world isn't great, and a lot of that stuff they got rid There's of. Goddamn coconuts! I gotta collect these goddamn coconuts, and they brought back a lot of those same things in No More Heroes Three. And No More Heroes Two got rid of that stuff. I think that's the thing that frustrated me uh, the most with No More Heroes Three is the fact that No More Heroes Two really pared down a lot of that um filler content that no more heroes one had they got rid of the open world they replaced a lot of the jobs with 18 bit or not 18 bit 8 bit slash 16 bit mini games stuff that i would say was more fun to actually do no more heroes 3 added a lot of no more heroes one elements back in in a way where i was like wait really why would you do this um but i think the thing that the thing that would help out with a Deadpool game for Suit 51 compared to No More Heroes 3 is the fact that I think in No More Heroes 3, I got to a point in that game where it felt like they ran out of budget. It felt like they're like, okay, cool, the game's opening up, and in order to actually make this game a decent length, we have to add in a bunch of filler. We have to reuse a bunch of assets. We have to pare down combat a bit compared to No More Heroes 2. And for me, that it was more so a thing of budget rather than the game design vision not being there. If Suda51 is making a Deadpool game, I'm sure he would have the resources that uh, uh, Disney or Marvel would want to give him to, to actually make that game good. And so, like, that being the case, I would love to see Suda51 make that kind of game with the full backing of a Marvel. Um, because I think yeah. I think that could be a really cool thing. And I think you don't really get... I mean, we haven't had many Marvel games, at least in the, in the mo- modern era of, of Marvel games, from Japanese developers. And I think... A Deadpool by Suda51 would be a cool different take on a Marvel game. Yeah, I mean, that, that, you sold me a lot more than I, I was going into this. But yeah, it definitely it comes down to the budget. It, it's that complicated thing, though. Of We look at Suda51 and the games he's put out over the last 20 years. Yeah. And it's like, how many of them have been legitimately good? And how many of them have been like good to a certain subsect of people that like you're the asking, last thing you're asking did? dangerous questions, Tim. I, I know exactly. And and with that, it's like, so is budget the actual answer, or is there deeper problems? You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's where it's interesting. I'd love to see what a suited 51 game with with the budget that is actually necessary to to make the dream a reality. What would that look like? Because I think that it could be extremely special, or mm-hmm. it just could be a very expensive way to say fuckhead yeah i i do want to shout out the um what they mentioned about the three original ips that they're working on over the next decade i will say that is exciting to me one actually a couple things they say that no more heroes 3 is the end of no more heroes i think that is a bold-faced lie i think we're getting over here i think we're getting more no more heroes maybe they call it something different maybe it's more travis strikes again type sequels but we're definitely getting no more heroes like more no more heroes because no more heroes 3 very much points to you're getting more no more heroes and so i don't believe that for a second that said i do 
like the idea of, of three three new IPs coming from Grasshopper Manufacture because I think that gives them the space to not have to make games that harken back to older games. You know, I think, again, talking about No More Heroes 3, that's one of my biggest issues is that the game just didn't evolve enough compared to where No More Heroes 1 and 2 were at. And I think making new IPs really allows them to not be beholden to old standards and not have to do things that the old that older games did in order to make the the uh audience that loves those games like really still connect to them in a way that feel like makes makes those games feel older right like i want them to make something new i want them to make something fresh i i i liked um let it die the game that suda 51 put out in like 2016 2017 ish mm -hmm. uh the free to play souls like ish arcadey kind of game that he put out exclusively on playstation I thought that game had really cool ideas. As a whole, wasn't a fantastic game whatsoever, but I had fun playing that game, and I thought there were some really cool, interesting ideas in there. I want to see more of that. But back to our point, I want to see more of that with quality. I want to see that with budget. I want to see that actually developed over time and, and made to feel like a full product that not only I, as somebody who's a fan of Studio 51's games, can get behind, but that anyone can get behind and be like, oh, this is this is a 2021 uh, must-play game, right? Like, I want Studio 51 to put out those because I think yeah. he has those in him because he has the creativity. I know we talk about auteurs all the time, but I think he really is a dude with a, with a vision and knows how to carry out that vision, but he just needs the quality and, like, the budget to back him in order to make something great. Yeah. Totally. I'll never forget one time uh, Andrew Renee threw a karaoke party and there was a ton of people there. And all of a sudden I look over and I was like, is that Suda51 singing November Rain by Guns N' Roses? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. I, so. Suda51 seems like a cool dude. Kids. I He's a cool of, ass dude for One sure. of my friends oh, at, at PAX sent me a selfie of him with Suda51. He was like, yeah, I ran into Suda51. And I was like, you ran into Suda51? I don't think you understand how much I love Suda51. <laughs> like, how, <laughs> how do I run into Suda51? And so he seems like a cool dude that'll take a picture with you at PAX if you run into him. Uh, Tim, before mm -hmm. we get into our next news story, I want to remind the folks that you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Purple. I know it may seem like it, but the world isn't really against us from getting a good night's sleep. Luckily, you'll have no difficulties drifting off to sleep on a Purple mattress. That's because only Purple mattresses use their fancy grid technology. It's a unique ventilated design that lets air flow through to keep you cool. I can tell you this as a fact. I have the Purple pillow, and I will never use another pillow in my life. I love it so much. It never gets too hot. It's always cold. You don't need to flip it to the other side because it's just cold already. I don't know how it works. It's the grid. It's cool. The grid is also supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, the grid bounces back as you move and shift. Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of 200 or more. Go to purple.com slash games 10 and use promo code games 10. That's purple.com slash games 10 promo code games 10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple Purple.com slash games10, promo code games10, terms apply. Tim, it's time to talk about the new story that everybody's been waiting for. Story Hell number yeah. three, finally, Fortnite adds finally. Mike Lowry. This is from Wesley LeBlanc at IGN. Kevin, I have an image that you can pull up uh, that's being linked from IGN. Thank you so much for that. Fortnite has added Will Smith's Mike Lowry character from the Bad Boys movie franchise to the Battle Royale's item shop. Epic Games announced the Bad Boys slash Fortnite crossover in a blog post on Saturday, revealing that, a, revealing that a little of Miami's South Beach would be coming to the game by way of Detective Mike Lowry. The Mike Lowry outfit can be purchased in the Fortnite item shop right now, includes the detective's duffel bag bling, or duffel back bling. Uh, the, loose, the loose cannon set also features Lowry's dual-wielding pickaxe, known as the loose cannon cutters. Unfortunately for bad boys, for bad boys diehards, Lowry's police partner and best friend Marcus Burnett is nowhere to be seen. Tim, it's finally happening. We've been waiting so long for it to happen. So Mike Lowry's in Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ride together, together, die together. Bad boys for life, baby. What he the hell? Great. What the he actual great. hell? He does look <laughs> great. This is. This is so random. It makes no sense at all. I'm so happy this is the world we live in. That Fortnite, among other games, can just be like, you know what? We're just going to do this partnership. Why? Because it's cool. And there's someone out there that is going to vibe really, really hard with it. This is the type of news that has transcended my normal group of, of 
Twitter follows of people be like Josh Makuga might be playing video games for the first time in his damn life because of this. You know what I mean? What the hell though? Why bless? Why? Why is this happening? Out of all of Will Smith's roles, you pick Mike Lowry to put into Fortnite. You could have picked the Fresh Prince. You know how cool the Fresh Prince would have been in Fortnite? You could have picked uh, uh, what was it? his was it Agent J in Men in Black? Agent L, Agent K, one of the agents, one of the letters of the alphabet. I got twenty six guesses. If I'll you can't right. if you can't remember, it's probably not the best idea to put it in. I think it's Agent J. I know there's definitely yeah. an Agent J there. I forget if it's him or if it's K the older was the guy. other dude. K was the other guy. It was Agent J and Agent K. Agent J K. Just kidding. Who are you calling right now, Sam? Uh, Makuga. Nick Scarpino, you're live on oh, Kind of Funny mind. Games Daily right now. Um, I just wanted cool. to get your your quick thoughts on an addition to Fortnite uh, that is coming out today. They are adding Mike Lowry to Fortnite. <laughs> I mean, first off, my, my thought is great, but what happened to Marcus Burnett? And I think we can all agree that he is, like me, the short foundation of the Bad Boys organization. Is the and uh, I'm just going to say it right now. I think he's getting cheated out of uh, out of his calling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the unfortunate news is uh, Marcus is nowhere to be found. So you'll, you'll have to play as Mike. I'm not going to play Fortnite. I'm going to play as Fortnite. Can't, we hate Kenny. Marcus Burnett. You keep coming in and out. Who is the first to come and they can't shoot a basketball. Got it, got it. Okay, well, thank thank you very much for that, Nick. No problem. Okay. We'll see you, sir. Bye. Oh, he said something about shooting a basketball? Yeah. He did say that. I heard it. Hell yeah. But uh, <laughs> Tim, this, this Tim won't a... elaborate. I love it. <laughs> Tim, Tim's like, I don't know, man. I was listening I don't to what even, he was I, I was not listening to what he was saying. <laughs> uh, but like, again, Fresh Prince, <laughs> Hancock, Agent J. Hancock. <laughs> Hancock. All right. You lost. <laughs> no, the but like, we have, they have superheroes in Fortnite. Like, they didn't they have a whole season about superheroes? You telling me that you didn't want to add Hancock for that season? <laughs> Hold Why on, is Mike, Mike Lowry the go-to? No. Bless. What this up? is it. They're just testing the water here for season of the will. Okay. Oh my god. Well, we finally will, get hitched. There's a way we get literally it. It's just like twenty different versions. Will, of will Smith, Smith literally plays Deadshot. <laughs> <laughs> like that DC uh, hero. character from Wild Wild West. That's a great, great idea. Yeah. There we go. God. Gemini Man. Both versions. Oh, oh, my, old, yeah, me. old Will Smith, young Will Smith. Yeah, Will Smith and, from oh, uh, from oh. Seven Pounds. And depending on which one you play, uh, some are one's exclusive to the 120 frames per second version. Oh, oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That'd be dope. Yeah. That'd yeah. be dope. Give me Will Smith from Concussion. So few people yeah, yeah, got yeah. that reference. I bet you. It doesn't matter. The people that did, they fuck with it hard. Exactly, exactly, and that's what it's I all just, about. Plus, here's the thing: Can you perfect. imagine being Emmett Watkins Jr. and seeing this news? And your mind just exploding. Like, Emma, Emma Watkins Jr. had a week last week. Because he got a new Kendrick song. He got the announcement of a new Kendrick album and the fact that Kendrick's changing his name. He got a Saints Row game. He got a Kanye West album. Emma Watkins Jr. is living his best life, and I'm happy for him. Yeah, yeah. God bless. Good for him. Tim, let's talk about story number four. NetEase is in talks to hire the creator of Yakuza. Uh, that is the games, not the organization. I'm pulling from Takashi Mochizuki at Bloomberg. <laughs> NetEase is in final negotiations to poach Yakuza franchise creator Toshihiro Nagoshi from Sega, a sign of how Chinese games companies are expanding beyond their home turf during a government-led crackdown. The hire from Sega would mark the biggest coup in a contest between NetEase and close rival Tencent to scoop up video game talent and assets in Japan made more urgent by slowing growth and regulatory pressure at home. Nagoshi, who developed and Helms, one of the, one of Sega's most successful action series, is expected to set up his own team and create new games. People familiar with the matter said, "He hasn't find he hasn't signed a final contract, uh, and his duties have yet to be finalized." They said, asking not to be identified, discussing a private deal. To add more context, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in Luke Plunkett. Uh, from Kotaku, who writes uh, regarding the same story, Nagoshi joined Sega in 1989 and has worked on everything from Daytona to Virtual Fighter to F Zero GX. But it's his, but it's his most recent blockbuster series, the Yakuza games, that now span eight main entries and a number of spinoffs that have perhaps made him most famous in the West, especially given his public prominence as the head of their development studio, Ryu Ga Gotoku. 
Nagoshi's departure will likely not have a direct impact on any of the series he has worked on recently, since they all belong to Sega and are made by huge teams of developers. But it will still be a blow for fans and Sega themselves to see a man responsible for so many of the company's biggest hits over the last 30 years to leave for a rival organization. Tim, this is this is a wild one. You know, like Yakuza is one of those franchises that over the years, especially especially over the last, I'm gonna say five years, as We've seen so many more Yakuza games get remastered, remade, and re-released. Has had a fan base that has grown exponentially over the years. And uh-huh. I know so many people, even Gary Witta talks about how much he it, he adores games like Yakuza Like a Dragon. To see to see uh, the creator and lead being taken off in order to join another company, I'm sure, is probably a big blow for a lot of people. Yeah, you know, this is interesting. Like, we're talking about a, a legend here. Like, this this dude is responsible for so many Sega franchises, at least in some way. Like, I'm talking about Daytona, Virtual Fighter, to, I mean, even F-Zero GX, which was a collaboration between Sega and Nintendo back on the GameCube. Like, that was back when Nintendo was getting really weird and like they allowed capcom to to make a zelda game with the the oracle games they they allowed uh i think it was capcom to partner for Star Fox um assault and for um for f-zero to partner with sega to to make this game the, those this more arcadey style thing because they had that background that infrastructure um all the way to to things like super monkey ball that um i've been talking about a lot recently because we've been seeing the trailers like you just love so much and it, it's interesting to see him leave especially to go to net east potentially like there is this this whole world of video games that we just don't know much about we just talk a lot about bless when yeah. it comes to the 10 cent and net ease and all this stuff and it's there's a this future building dude, that sounds scary <laughs> dude i i while uh, reading reading the story for the show i went i just looked up net ease's output like in terms mm-hmm. of games and i went through the games and i was like i've heard of none of these games like scrolling through there are games that probably have gigantic audiences in other countries that we're just not aware of because we are here in our uh our, our echo chamber of being in the west and playing a certain a certain type of game but when you look at the numbers, when you look at the 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 um, size of the audiences, right? Like NetEase and Tencent, especially, but we're more familiar with Tencent because of Riot and all all, all the other Tencent holdings companies. Mm-hmm. Seeing seeing how much they're responsible for is insane. And yeah, like there is this big war going on in between these huge companies that we can't fathom because it is go it is like the, it. I mean, it is it is a war between China, uh, Chinese conglomerate companies that are giant that are just trying to buy out other game developers and other studios mm-hmm. to try and compete, and it's insane. Yeah, and so like this is kind of interesting though of like them making this move uh, targeting a specific person, and like what does that mean for what NetEase's plan is? Like, are they trying to, you know, take the the foundation they have of money and uh, kind of audience? Uh, with all the the different games they have and try to add some quality control to that like that that's mm-hmm. not necessarily the worst thing right like this is sad news for sega but sega's been an interesting place the last decade anyways right like in so many ways a lot of these these franchises are uh and i don't necessarily mean this in a bad way but on cruise control where it's like they got this they have teams that understand what makes yakuza yakuza right like they, the, i think that they'll be able to continue without him being there but it, it's it's just weird times, man. This this sound yeah. this headline doesn't sound exciting, but it could potentially lead to an exciting world where there's a whole other side to video games being created that we are talking about, and they aren't just flying under the radar for the mm-hmm. West. Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest thing here is that I hope uh, that Yakuza continues to be quality, right? Like, I hope that they, I, I hope that is the thing that yakuza at this point has been standardized in a way that even though the creator is leaving the the team that he's left behind is equipped and understanding of what yakuza is and how to make yakuza and that whoever was below him or alongside him making those games are able to rise to the ranks and be able to lead those games in a way that is competent in a way that the audience can can look to as okay no we actually we trust this new person because they understand what yakuza is and they understand how to lead this team that is the big hope because i definitely understand like if you told me that um uh i'm trying to think of a relative i guess we talked about uh, kojima earlier right like if you told me told me that konami's working on a new metal Gear solid game i'd be like all right without hideo kojima i don't know how i feel about this i know yakuza a different thing because yakuza has been ongoing and you know this not it's not like it's not like um sega has been mistreating uh uh t- the the creator here or it's not it's not it, it's not the same torn story There's that we so have much. between yeah. kojima and konami right but you even look at jeff kaplan with blizzard and when he when he leaves overwatch it's like 
oh all right well i'm gonna i'm hopefully they continue doing this thing like that scares me a little bit but hopefully the people that are still there are still equipped yeah what's interesting about what you're saying here is the kojima konami thing obviously there's a lot more into it because of the the politics and and all that and the shadiness and all that let alone where konami is right now uh as a video game developer and publisher where it's like not good right like they're they, they are not really making video games and especially not great video games like they used to yeah. uh whereas with sega it's interesting because uh to apply it to this logic of a creator and how important they are and all that stuff like between me and you bless i feel like we are more qualified to talk about this than most like sonic teams sonic games aren't the best sonic games of recent years mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so it's like sometimes maybe it is other teams that are going to understand what makes these franchises tick mm -hmm. and what they need to evolve and change even if evolving means going back uh to the drawing board in some cases like this might not be the worst uh news and and sega has kind of proven that well said tim uh, let's round out the Roper Report with story number five. It's a quick one. <clears throat> I'm pulling from Nival. Uh, Disco Elysium has been rated for Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, and Switch, which I'm going to say is very exciting. Everybody should play Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium, of course, is the uh, uh, CRPG game, the top down. You are playing as a detective. You've lost a memory. You're going back and trying to solve a case. It has some of the most interesting and complex writing that I've experienced in a video game that I've played. I uh, really adore that game. And it's really exciting that seemingly people are going to be able to get it on other platforms. I think Switch would be a fantastic way to play that game. So get hyped, everybody. Tim, would you ever have any interest in playing Disco Elysium? I know that it is a different type of game than Tim Gettys usually plays. Yeah, I, I booted it up. I played for a little bit and I was just like, I don't have the patience for this. It's fair. Yeah. That's fair. In my is... old age, man, it's just like I know like the thing I've learned uh over time is that there are genres I like, there are genres mm -hmm. I love, there are genres I just don't vibe yep. with. And I've always tried to give them a shot. I try to not write things off. And when there are these rare exceptions of like there's these games where it's like, you know what, it transcends all of that. It's just so good that you need to give it a shot. I try to. And infamously, I've told the story a million times. That's proven very valuable to me, and it's given me uh some new favorite genres that i didn't have before fire emblem when i played it for the first time path of radiance on the gamecube i would have before that told you i hate these type of tactical strategy games i don't like that at all fuck that i played that now i love them i love them and i'm willing to play other games in that genre because of that so it's like i always want to try to give it a shot having said that though uh disco elysium it, it didn't do it for me and yeah. maybe it's just because you need to play long enough for it to grab me but that's just not where i'm at in my life yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it's just the fact that Disco Elysium is very much its genre. I remember when, when the game first came out uh, quite a few years ago, I was listening to podcasts about it, and all those podcasts they're talking about how, like, hey, like I'm usually not a, a a computer RPG or classic RPG, whatever the CNC RPG stands for. I'm not that kind of person, right? I'm not an adventure game kind of person, but Disco Elysium was able to pull me in. Even me playing Disco Elysium, I would say the same thing. Those are usually not my type of games, but Disco Elysium did pull me in. I would also say that I don't think Disco Elysium is going to pull everybody in if you're not into that kind of that kind of game. I think the it, it is the closest it is the the closest I've been to like or I felt like playing a game is reading a book. There is so much text in that game. There's so much reading. There's so much dialogue. There's so much um uh like even in the way that the dialogue functions, right? Like there's so much there in terms of what you can get out of any dialogue sequence and choosing your own adventure and understanding what different dialogue means and how it pertains to the character build that you've created. It is such a complex game and that pulled me in just because I was fascinated with it. But also by the time I beat the game, I really adore it, but like it didn't turn me into a person that's going to play more CRPGs. Yeah, what, like, what, I was what does like, the cool. C stand for in CRPG? I keep pretending I know. I, I've looked it up before and I get different answers on the internet, but I'm going to say computer RPG is the most like popular version of that. Okay. It's like the click, click and point RPG. No, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. People also say classic people like people go back and forth between computer and computer. Okay. And okay. I, I get what that's implying. That makes sense. Exactly. Tim, I'm really excited for people to get the chance to play Disco Elysium, but it releasing on Xbox one, Xbox series S and Xbox series x and switch is so far away if i want to what's coming out to mommy drop shops today where would i look the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games daily show host each and every week day yeah
out today we got book of travels for pc trash sailors for switch tiny topia for pc and then 30xx level 7 dustria and fires of industry update is available now uh new dates for you tactical combat department is coming to steam on october 14th flying city builder airborne kingdom lands on consoles november 9th grow song of the ever tree blossoms onto pc and consoles november 16th 2021 and then rhythm of the universe Ionia is out September 23rd on Quest, PSVR, and on Steam. Of course, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can squat up, you can get your questions in, you can uh, uh, get the post show. Uh, but I'm pulling from Brian who wrote in with a squat up and says, uh, I started an alliance for Marvel Future Revolution that uh, that all kind of funny best friends can join. There are a few of us there already, but we'd love to see more best friends join us. We're playing on the Sakaar 2 server, so if you're there, come join us. Uh, warning, you can change servers to play with us, but it restarts your progress, so beware. Hope to see you all in-game. If you want to play some of that Marvel Future Revolutions with Brian, you can join the Alliance. The Alliance name is KFBFs. That is uh, capitalized KFBF lowercase s at the end kfbfs tim mm -hmm. now it's time for one of them rotating segments uh we have a required reading for you uh over on game informer ben reeves wrote a long article titled naughty by nature uh naughty dog leadership reflects on the studio's history uh ben over there got to interview uh the leads over there at naughty dog did an extensive deep dive with them i'm going to read the first paragraph but then i encourage everybody to go check that out on PS I Love You XOXO later today, uh, me and Janet will talk a little bit about that interview in our PlayStation update section. And so I highly recommend go read the article, get caught up. We'll break it down on PS I Love You. But for now, the article starts like this. Naughty Dog is one of the most beloved game developers in the industry. Since 1984, the studio has, de has delivered a steady stream of hits, including iconic franchises like Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, Uncharted, and The Last of Us. But making games isn't getting any easier, so we sat down with Naughty Dog co-presidents Evan Wells mm. and Neil Druckmann to talk about how they're shepherding the legacy of the studio, working to combat work crunch, and dealing with harsh criticism. Again, it's a very good article by Ben Reeves. Uh, it's an exclusive interview. Uh, they absolutely killed it. Did a great job. Go mm -hmm. over there and read it. Uh, and again, we'll talk about it on PS. I love you. XOXO. Fantastic now, read, by the way. Very, oh, very 100%. interesting. A lot of, lot of uh, information I didn't expect to get from them. So check it out. Let's jump in to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in list of what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and on podcast services around the globe just wanted you get to know that uh when you asked me the mom and grop shop thing where should you look and there was like a slight pause before i started saying it it's mm. because i was distracted trying to look up uh if gemini man on <laughs> 4k uhd is uh in the high frame rate because i need to buy that if it is <laughs> good for you tim I, yeah. I love that you're part of this life you're part of the i'm gonna part see things life, as baby. clearly as i can yeah <laughs> i want to see it all i want to see it all possible uh, Nanobiologist writes in and says, not sure if this is in housekeeping, but I didn't hear you mention that y'all are not streaming on Wednesday because of hashtag a day off Twitch to fight the hate raids and Twitch's inaction. Uh, of course, thank you for that, Nanobiologist. As a reminder, we will not be live on Twitch. We'll be, we'll be recording all of our content as usual, and so you will still get a KFGD, but it will only be on podcast services and on YouTube um, uh, and video Real quick, services. it's fucking bullshit. All, I mean, first off, duh, hate raids are bullshit, and this needs mm. to stop, and Twitch, like, I can't believe how bad they've handled this all but bless like you were tweeting like this, this has been happening to you multiple times in the last week like oh yeah I, I just think that's important to put out there where it's like this isn't just something that's happening to some people it's like this is a thing that's happening to blessing people like this is oh, a yeah. thing that's happening to people that we know come on twitch i mean yeah Figure i think the uh, fuck out you were uh streaming me andy and alana pierce are streaming uh monday for aliens predator or aliens fire team elite i think that's the, that's the game yeah aliens fire team elite and all three of us you know got hate rated in one stream right like it is it is an issue uh it is something that needs to be dealt with and like twitch they acknowledged it uh like weeks ago and still you know nothing's been done if anything it seems like it's gotten worse because i went from getting no hate raids to getting multiple within a week like three streams in a row pretty much and there was one stream where i got where i got hate rated multiple times in the same stream and so like it's an issue. It's a bummer. Uh, yeah. But we're we're taking the day off on Wednesday on Twitch specifically uh, totally. in protest of that. 
Bless, real quick, I, I, I want uh, some insight on this because I feel like there's a lot of people that don't really understand what is going on right now. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we got a missing link in the chat saying, I'm unfamiliar with this. How does one know if a raid is a hate raid and not a normal raid? So people are, it's interesting because I think the term hate raid, peop, uh, people take that and compare it to actual raids, right? Which is you get a notification on Twitch, it'll say X person has raided you and, you know, people are hanging out and people are coming through from another person's stream. Hate raids aren't actually using the Not actual that. raid function, yeah. right? Like basically in the way that I've experienced it, I'll be playing a game, look at chat and I'll see just a bunch of bot posts posting hateful things right and they've gotten really creative with it in a way where you look over it and it seems like gibberish but people are basically trying to get around all the hate filters that they have on twitch and are basically using different characters they're uh uh doing like they're like putting in different forms of it but basically your your chat will be filled with an endless amount of bots spamming hateful things in chat uh and then you have to like figure out how to deal with that and get and, and get rid of it but yeah, it's like it's basically a way for people to attack you through setting in bots. That's like the simple form of it. Yeah, it's fucked yeah. up, and when, like Twitch needs to figure out a way to stop it because it's just it's unacceptable, and it is just getting more and more common since they said they were going to figure it out. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nanobiologist writes in a you're wrong and says Will Smith was Agent J, Tommy Lee Jones was Agent K. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I saw people getting mad in chat about that. I want to remind you, there are like 26 letters in the alphabet, everybody. All right. And it's hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's hard out of all the things that you could have said right there, it was like, oh, you know, Bad Boys was a long time ago. I don't remember. No, what you're bringing Men up is there's too many letters. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, Men in Black. There's too many letters. Twenty six letters. There's twenty six letters. You when you name, a, when you name a character after a letter, is I have twenty six chances to get it right to memorize this this man's name. All right, Agent uh, J is not a memorable name. His uh, name could have been Agent Z for all I know. Or Agent L. Again, a lot of a lot of letters we could roll with. A lot of letters. Uh let's see here. Let's see here. I think that's it for kindofunny.com slash you're wrong. Oh wait, wait, one more. Uh Re resident chat says Book of Travels got delayed a few days ago. Release is TBD now. So just a heads up for you on that. Of course, today is Monday, which means we have a full week ahead of us for kind of funny games daily. Uh th this week's hosts go like this. Tomorrow. You're getting Tamar Hussein in the hosting seat uh, with Gary Witta. Wednesday, you're getting me and Andy. Thursday, it's Janet and Tim. And then on Friday, it's me and Tim. That's right. We're back at it like a bad habit. If you're watching this live right now on Twitch, after this is Andy Cortez, I believe, playing some Super Animal Royale. So get hyped for that. You can catch that later if you subscribe to YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Plays. Remember he's this. Be playing something else. Just a heads up. Oh, they're going to be play playing something else? Do you know? Do you know what he's gonna be playing? Nah, he's gonna let the chat decide. So like, get, get oh. ready. Oh, oh, a little uh, democracy going on in here. Get hyped. <laughs> you love to see it. You love to see the system at work. Remember, this has been kind of funny games daily, each and every weekday live right here on twitchtv slash games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreoncom games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily. <laughs>